Yara Ling Hope is a friend and a local resident. She's a case manager and licensed therapist, wife and mother to two multi multiracial girls and identifies as biracial Chinese and white. She couldn't be here tonight because her youngest is only a month old, but she gave me permission to share her words from a Facebook post Tuesday night in response to the violent attack of the Asian woman in New York City who was on her way to church. You say you stand with us. You use the proper hashtags. You talk about how effed up it all is. But where are you? Where are you outside of social media when it's not virtue signaling? When it's not reposting? When it's not adding a frame to your Facebook picture? Where are you when we are being beaten, shot, spit on, yelled slurs at, etc., etc.? Where the F are you? when a 65-year-old woman is stomped in broad daylight and you close the door in her face? Hate crimes are happening right in front of people, all while they do nothing. Where are you? I reached out to her and she further shared, I had a hard time stumbling on that video yesterday, imagining it was my 72-year-old mom, three grown men, I am still so stricken over that video on top of everything else. There are so many videos right now of our elders being attacked and people doing nothing. Where is safe and what is safe anymore? My name is Nesreen Mughal Barrows. As a person of color who's lived in Whatcom for almost 30 years, I have bit my tongue often in the interest of navigating white space safely, maintaining comfort for others, or to protect myself from the mental exhaustion of opening up to someone who doesn't want to hear my truth. George Floyd's murder and the many others in the BIPOC community which preceded it and the xenophobic rhetoric from top officials in the country compelled me to acknowledge that I had bitten my tongue too many times to ever do it again. Since then, I've been repeatedly gifted a platform for us to confront the roots of racism and xenophobia within our community. But allowing myself to share honestly has forced me to reckon with almost four decades of suppressed racial trauma. And it's been really hard. For the first time in my life, I can undoubtedly relate to the statistics on the many ways racism takes a toll on the mental health of the BIPOC community. I now speak with a therapist and I share this with you all just to say you're not alone in this grief. It's so easy in this community to feel like you're alone on an island of white people who don't understand. But you're not alone. And if you need help and you don't know where to start, come talk to me. And if there's anybody here who is comfortable to be approached and be a support, maybe you can raise your hands right now. Because a lot of people are hurting right now. Take a look around. Thank you. <sighs> Guys, we can get through this together. For the first time in many years, I found myself inspired by conversations with many of you to write a poem for tonight. And it references some firsthand accounts experienced right here in Whatcom County. And writing it brought me a lot of healing. So I hope it brings you healing too called the cycle of hate. It's a cycle and it shakes and it aches and it takes. It's the rhetoric that frustrates with its ill disguised hate. It's the heightened awareness when we face a world that questions an entire race. It's the longer route we take in groups for safety's sake. It's those who think we look the same, blind to the pain in an exotic face. It's a white man's bad day while being told our pain has no place. It's the excuses that are made as the death toll reaches eight and another round of grief, which numbness will replace. The weapons are different, but the cycle's the same. Scapegoat a group to fear and to blame. It's ignored pronouns, vile tongues, knotted rope, smoking guns, a clan rally held in a neighbor's field, a broken treaty, you all know the deal, 
a death threat received from a Zoom for a Zoom event, a kick to the back while cuffed to a fence, four sterilizations because the offspring's too brown, can't use this shelter, don't sleep on this mound, a little old lady stomped to the ground, abandoned by three men hanging around, shots to the chest, fresh out of bed, a knee on the neck long after he's dead, a knife through the window aimed at my head. No matter the weapon, we lift up their names. We send up their spirits on the wings of a crane, knowing it's a cycle that surely must break under the weight that hate creates. Under the weight of the lives hate takes and takes and takes and takes.